Another observation concerning symbolism more particularly here imposes itself. There are symbols that are common to the most diverse and widespread traditional forms, not as a result of borrowings, which would in many cases be quite impossible, but because they really belong to the primordial tradition whence, directly or indirectly, all these forms have issued. This is precisely the case with the vase or cup. Why should what relates thereto be merely folklore when present in pre-Christian traditions, whereas in Christianity alone it is an essentially Eucharistic symbol? The assimilations envisaged by Bornoff and others like him are not to be rejected here, but rather the naturalistic interpretations some have wished to impose on Christianity and on everything else. Interpretations that are in fact nowhere valid. What needs to be done, then, runs exactly contrary to the procedure of Waite, who, confining himself to external and superficial explanations, which he takes on faith so long as they do not concern Christianity, sees radically different and unrelated things where there are only more or less multiple aspects of the same symbol or of various applications. It would no doubt have been otherwise had he not been hampered by his preconceived notion of a sort of difference in kind between Christianity and other traditions. Likewise, though Waite quite rightly rejects any application to the Grail legend of theories that make appeal to so-called gods of vegetation, it is regrettable that he should be much less clear about the ancient mysteries, which never had anything in common with this quite recently invented naturalism. Gods of vegetation and other such fictions have never existed save in the imaginations of Fraser and others of his ilk whose anti-traditional intentions are not in doubt. It seems that Waite has been more or less influenced by a certain evolutionism, a tendency that clearly betrays itself when he declares that the origin of the legend is much less important than the form it eventually obtained. And he seems to believe that there must have been, from one to the other, a sort of progressive improvement. In reality, where something truly traditional is concerned, everything must on the contrary be present from the beginning, and subsequent developments serve only to render it more explicit without the adjunction of new and external elements. Waite seems to admit a sort of spiritualization, whereby a higher meaning might be grafted onto something that did not originally possess it, whereas it is in fact usually the other way around, in this way recalling a bit too closely the profane outlook of the historians of religion. We find a striking example of this sort of reversal in connection with alchemy, for Waite thinks that material alchemy preceded spiritual alchemy, and that this latter made its appearance only with Kunrath and Jacob Boehm. If he had been familiar with certain Arabic treatises extant well before these writers, he would have been obliged to modify his opinion simply on the basis of written documents. Moreover, since he recognises that the language employed is the same in both cases, we might ask him how he can be sure in any given text that the operations described are material only. The truth is that it was not always necessary to declare explicitly that this was really a question of something else, something that had to be veiled precisely by the symbolism then in use, and if subsequently there were some who did declare this, it was largely because of degenerations traceable to an ignorance of the value of the symbols which led men to take everything literally and in an exclusively material way, as did the poffers who were the precursors of modern chemistry. To think that a new meaning can be given to a symbol that does not possess it intrinsically is almost to deny symbolism, for it makes of the latter something artificial if not entirely arbitrary, and in any case something purely human, in this order of ideas, weight goes so far as to say that everyone finds in a symbol what he himself puts into it, so that its meaning could change with the mentality of each epoch. Here we recognise the psychological theories so dear to many of our contemporaries. Were we not right then to speak of evolutionism? We have said it often, but cannot repeat it often enough. Every true symbol bears its multiple meanings within itself, and this from its very origin because it is not constituted as such by any human convention but in virtue of the law of correspondence that links all worlds together. If some see these meanings while others do not, or see them only in part, they are no less truly contained in the symbol, for it is the intellectual horizon of each person that makes all the difference, symbolism being an exact science and not a reverie in which individual fantasies are given free reign.